as you look across this valley, uh, historic reports uh, from early settlers of St. Louis reported that literally the bluffs along the, uh, the river, both sides were dotted with mounds. Unfortunately today, there's only one mound remaining in the city of St. Louis, and that's Sugarloaf Mound. St. Louis used to be called Mound City. That was our nickname. And early visitors to St. Louis, Europeans, marveled at the mounds in present day downtown St. Louis. And they were very concerned as one by one, these mounds started being destroyed to make way for a growing city. And they urged the, uh, the uh, city administrators at the time to preserve these mounds. And they, they even said, what a wonderful city this would be to come visit. People would come from all over the world to see this great city and to visit the uh, great Indian mounds that are here. About a thousand years ago, this valley, uh, the Mississippi Valley, right in front of present day St. Louis, was the busiest place in what is present day the United States of America. People had reached a level where they were living in the same area year round, year after year, and they had become an intensely agricultural culture, uh, centered primarily a, around growing corn. You know that while they were here, they developed a very highly complex social, political, religious system. Studying uh, from artifacts, from their artwork, and also listening to uh, Native American um, uh, stories that are told today and that were handed down from generation to generation, that they may have had a three-part view of their universe. The lower world or world beneath was below water or caves, and many mounds were actually built atop cave systems. The middle world was occupied by humans, and the upper world or the, it was a spirit world where their deity lived and uh, dominated, the, the sun. And they may have built the mounds to reach up from the uh, middle world, placing their leaders or perhaps their temple high up closer to the upper world. They built about 120 mounds. The largest of them was Monk's Mound, and that's not only the biggest mound in Cahokia, it's also the largest mound that was built by ancient people in North or South America. It's the largest totally earthen structure. It stands 100 feet high, has uh, several different terraces to it, and it covers an area of about 14 acres. Mounds come in a variety of shapes, uh, one being a conical shaped mound, which is usually associated as burials. Secondly, a platform mound, which has a flat top and usually an elite member of the society, the chief would live on top or there'd be a temple on top. Third type being a ridge-shaped mound, which we, we think was used and built to mark boundaries within a given territory. The fourth shape, which we really don't see much around here, is an effigy-shaped mound. It's a, it's a mound built into the shape of an animal, usually. Sugarloaf Mound is a three-tiered mound. Think of it in terms of steps. This being the top step was built by the uh, Native Americans. The middle step was probably carved into the natural slope and the lower step also carved into the natural slope. This is unusual, the stair step um, mound formation. Um, we're very fortunate that this last surviving mound was purchased by the Osage Nation. They are an Indian nation out of Oklahoma and they have purchased this to, re to um, preserve it for generations to come. So there's about 80 that are left today in some form or another. And fortunately, we now have 70 of those protected as part of Cahokia Mound State Historic Site. Uh, also, there were subdivisions built here in the middle of the site. Uh, it's not just the mounds that we were concerned about. So is this land around the mounds, because that's where the people live. It's where their houses were. It's where their daily activities took place. So we learn sometimes a lot more about them digging in their residential areas than we do of digging on a mound, but we hate to see any of it lost. Regardless of the shape or the function, uh, burials have been found in and near every shaped mound. So 
when we as uh, mound preservationists look at a, um, at a hill that could be a mound, when in doubt you assume it's, a, it's an Indian built mound until proven otherwise. And secondly, you should assume that there are burials within the mound or near the mound. And just we wouldn't put up with people, grave rob robbers going into our historic cemeteries, say at Jefferson Barracks and digging up graves, looking for artifacts. We in no way should um, put up with grave robbers coming and digging into Indian mounds looking for grave goods. It is a felony to knowingly disturb an unmarked human burial in Missouri. Unfortunately, there's no burial mound police and um, no one to date has ever been prosecuted for vandalizing a, a, uh, an Indian mound. In mind of people who are collecting from fields that have been plowed up by farmers where the artifacts are pulled out of position. But anytime you dig, it's like tearing a page out of a book. You know, very destructive. So uh, the mounds that are left here at Cahokia, and there's some that are still on private property, uh, we're in the process, our support group, the Cahokia Mounds Museum Society, has a land acquisition program and they are trying to raise funds to buy more of this property to help protect more of the mounds. So if anybody would like to contribute to that fund, that would certainly be helpful. Quietly, there's a growing army of people who are adopting local Indian mounds and watching over them. There's a, um, a website available if you would just do an internet search of the Missouri Mound Adoption Project. It's, this, it's a, a website where you can become connected with this loose coalition of people who are adopting and looking over, uh, watching over Indian mounds. The reason that I think mounds are so important is that people have been living in and around the St. Louis area for at least 11, maybe 12,000 years. They left little hints of their presence here. But it, for me, the mounds are the greatest reminder of what was here. It's obvious when you see a mound such as Monk's Mound that a great deal of work and planning went into it.